Good morning, everybody. I'm Zach Blanchard, and this is Political Brew. Joining me this morning are analysts, conservative radio talk show hosts Ray Richardson and Democratic activist and podcaster Genius Black. Good morning to you both. Hi, Gentlemen, great to see you. Hi, Been a while. First, the Pentagon is taking some new steps to protect military recruits from brain damage. The guidelines recently released in a memo to senior leadership will require all new recruits to undergo baseline cognitive assessments. Those same tests will be done for high risk personnel likely exposed to blasts within the next year. This follows intense scrutiny of the Army for its actions in the months leading up to the deadly Lewiston shootings. The gunman had worked as an Army training specialist in grenade ranges. A study of his brain revealed the blast likely contributed to brain damage, impacting his mental health and Ray, his family members even testified before the commission investigating the shootings, saying that the army needs to be doing more here. Um, Maine's congressional delegation has been calling for action um, and is applauding this move. Is that enough? I don't know if it's enough, but it's certainly a step in the right direction. You can't determine if someone has decline in their brain if you don't have a baseline to start with. And I, I think with our military personnel, we know that they're in constant danger when they're deployed or even when they're in training. So I think this is a good idea. Some people have said it's an evasion of privacy. Don't join the military if you don't want to do it. This could be just another requirement of joining the military. These folks need help. And if we have a baseline to work from, and then they have been in exposed situations, we can go in and test them again and see if anything has happened and we'll be able to help them. We all know that was part of the tragedy of Robert Card and the 18 people who were killed in Lewiston. Genius. I have to agree, this is a very important step. Uh, I don't think it's like an end all, but it, it sort of reminds me when we think about CTE in the NFL, right. right? Over time, we recognized how bad this was hurting people and their families, right? The blowback and what was happening with people's mental health. And so for me, um, you know, is this, is this gonna solve the thing in the future that specifically led to Robert Carr doing what he did? I don't know. However, we're gonna be more aware. We're gonna get those baselines and benchmarks. And just like in technology, you always wanna compare to see what the, where things have gone. I respect people's privacy, right? But I. I, we have to know and be, if we can have fair warning or get people treatment, all those things are important. Also, a lot of times during training, um, there's, there are many sub-concussive, there, there's basically smaller explosions that build up over time. Right. Again, hearkening back to the thoughts about CTE, it's not just like this one thing that happens, you're like, oh no, they're different forever. So we have to employ new tools to be aware. Yeah, right. I agree with you completely. All right, next topic. The main Supreme Court threw out a lawsuit brought by a group of Republicans against Governor Mills, Senate President Troy Jackson, and Speaker of the House Rachel Talbot Ross. William Clardy of Augusta is one of the plaintiffs. He said the governor and Democratic leaders broke the law and violated the separation of powers by working together to call a special legislative session last spring. That meant a newly passed budget could take effect on time and lawmakers could use the special session to work on other bills. They didn't keep their powers separate. The two branches colluded. If the session was illegal, then the laws that were passed were illegal. I think the court would have commented if they felt that it was unconstitutional. The court has not been afraid to comment in other cases. Now, to the average person, this is very inside baseball. But Genius, um, was it the right call to dismiss this case? I believe so. Um, because, it, and what they said was that there weren't standings. I remember being a kid looking at the court shows and judges cut through real quick when there's just nothing to stand on. And so, although I can understand some concern, I, I didn't hear any inkling of proof that the two parts, the two houses colluded. That's a strong statement. Talk, talking about the law and the constitution. Um, I think maybe it was a bit of a reach. Uh, again, I, I can respect concerns, but Special sessions happen, and they are also covered in the main state constitution. You can have special sessions. And Ray, this is not the first time this has happened. No, this is uh, the, the absolute epitome of elections have consequences. I said on my show Friday morning, vote like your life depends on it, because your country does. Mm. Elections have consequences. We have a Democratic governor, a Democratic House speaker, a Democratic uh, Senate president, they want to get together and pass this budget. I mean, you could argue that it wasn't good uh, bipartisanship or any of that kind of stuff, but they didn't break the law. We, we've done this many times. They pass a budget on March 31. They adjourn. 90 days later, that budget takes effect. So the government is funded July 1 when the new year starts. If you don't like it, work your butt off, elect new people, and then don't do it. Yeah. 
What about the special session after the fact, the, the continuing to work after they had ad well, essentially adjourned? Look, I had no problem with that because it's legal for them to do. Yeah. It may be untoward. I disagreed with some of the bills they allowed into it because it's mm. supposed to be for emergency purposes. Yeah. But again, that's an esoteric argument. That's a nuance. And if you don't like it, work your butt off and elect different people. All right. And finally, this week, the Maine Public Utilities Commission ruled law enforcement cannot use high utility bills as a way to find illegal marijuana growing operations. The proposal put forward by Versant would have allowed them to report suspiciously high power usage to the authorities. In a unanimous vote, the PUC rejected Versant's proposal. Commissioners said they were concerned people could get reported for legal operations and privacy rights would be violated here. Is that the, fair to say? Right. You know, it's a fine line. Obviously, we want to protect someone's privacy, and just because they have a high usage bill doesn't mean they're an illegal ma marijuana grow. On the other hand, these utilities, and I know this firsthand, my, old, my youngest daughter, who's now 25, when she was two, she snuck out of the house and took the dog out. She had on a shirt and no diaper. The CMP guy was there, and we own a condo. They called the Condo Association, who then called us and said, your daughter's outside naked. And I'm like, no, she's not. She's right here. And I turned around and she wasn't. Mm. So they reported that. So my point is, where's the line drawn here? It, we know that we have illegal marijuana grow fields that are being run by the Chinese in this state. They've been uncovered. If they suspect this going on, I don't know why it's harmful to report it to law enforcement, at least to let them investigate. Yeah. A slippery slope, though. It perhaps, is, though. Right? Sure, of course. You got to be careful. I was going to say, yeah, that's that. The fine line, as you say, yes. right? Um, we have to take action. I, I remember something I was reading about some of these Chinese grow houses, and the thing that blew me away is that many of the workers are actually in bondage. Like they're trapped yes, there, right. right? It's not a under the table job that you find on mm -hmm. Indeed. So and it's, some of them are being trafficked out of those places. And that's what I'm saying. It's, yes. This is a high level of criminality. Now, that being said, law enforcement is important and they need clues and tools, but I, it gets to these points where I feel like, again, I respect people's rights, but if you have, you know, CMP or some of these companies reporting directly to police and they show up and it turns out to be the completely wrong thing, but then violence occurs or there's a misunderstanding or things like that. And the whole thing happened, unfortunately, because of that, that, that data and information that was shared. I don't want that to happen. I don't want that to work, happen to Mainers or any of the other um, states where these grow houses are popping up. So I like that they're trying to thread the line, um, but I, I think uh, we just have to move forward. All right, we're going to take a quick break. The Weekend Morning Report is back right after this. Good morning, everybody. I'm Zach Blanchard, and this is Political Brew. Joining me this morning are analysts, conservative radio talk show host Ray Richardson, and Democratic activist and podcaster Genius Black. Good morning to you both. Good to see you guys. Yes. I want to start with the presidential race. According to a report from the Maine Secretary of State's office, voter registration spiked following President Joe Biden's announcement last month he would be stepping out of the race. Officials say data show more than 3,700 Mainers registered to vote in July. That's the most since last November. The data also shows that in the week that Biden dropped out alone, 1,200 people registered to vote, followed by another 1,100 the week after that. Now, they did not break down the parties here, but Ray, does this mean anything to you? You know, I don't think it does necessarily, because if you look around the country, you've seen voter registration spike in the aftermath of Biden dropping out. Some states, Republicans have an advantage, some states, Democrats do. I think maybe in Maine, because we are more of a blue state, it may be the enthusiasm around Vice President Harris Democrats were demoralized. We all know that. They knew they were going to lose the White House. They thought they would lose the House and the Senate because of what's going on with Joe Biden. And with Harris stepping in, now they feel like they have a fighting chance. So it may be a Democratic advantage here. But I think you, if you look around the country, because we were talking about this this week on my show, registrations are up. And that's a good thing, regardless of the party. Genius. I have to agree with that last statement very strongly, regardless of the party. Um, I think Kamala Harris is exciting uh, for a lot of people and particularly a lot more exciting than Joe Biden. So um, I'm not surprised that a lot of people registered, uh, even in the state of Maine. I think it might, it might make a difference, but I know for a fact that there's Democrats and Republicans registering. There are people getting their voices out. Mm -hmm. um, I really, I have to say, I think it's a win, but I think that moving on from Joe Biden as the most viable candidate, even though he is, uh, I thought, a good candidate, 
we saw some weaknesses and they decided to move on. I think sometimes that's good strategy. But Kamala Harris, Kamala Harris brings great energy, expectations, and amazing intellect. People question her intellect. I think we're going to be seeing more of that. So I'm not surprised, particularly young people, women, jazzed up about that woman. Right. Do you think that momentum has Republicans concerned, though? And is that perhaps causing more Republicans to register to vote in this case? It could be. I mean, I'm not concerned. I, I do think she's a smart woman. I've never said anything other than that. Yeah. I don't believe she is a person with a lot of great self-confidence because we have seen her off teleprompter and she really struggles in front of big crowds or in the big moment. Um, look, did she ignite some enthusiasm in the Democratic Party? Of course she did. You know, Joe Biden was not a good candidate for them. But the border is still porous. The economy is still tough. People are struggling. That hasn't changed. And according to her, according Kareem Jean-Pierre, the White House spokesperson, and according to Joe Biden, Kamala Harris and Joe Biden are synonymous on policy, so she has to take credit or blame for it. Right. Meantime, Congressman Jared Golden is making clear he won't endorse a candidate for president. Golden has said he doesn't support former President Donald Trump, but has avoided taking a stance on Vice President Kamala Harris. When asked at an event in Madawaska, he says it's just not his focus right now. I'm going to continue to stay focused on my race and on my job right through uh, right through the finish line. And, and I don't think uh, people elected me to, to spend all my time worrying about the, the national politics, uh, particularly other people's races. You know. Now, this is despite the fact Golden published an op-ed in the Bangor Daily News saying he believes Trump will win and he's, quote, OK with that. The former president has endorsed Golden's opponent, Republican Austin Terrio. Genius, does the average voter care? I don't think that who Jared Golden endorses is what will decide who Mainers vote for. Honestly, I think it matters. It's all information that comes in. So for me, I, I don't blame him for not wanting to get into it. I think there's this distortion field around Donald Trump. I, or there's multiple distortion fields floating around at the same time amongst politicians. And focusing on his race, I think, is good work. A, a lot of the young people, when they're online, they'll see something bad and they say, ooh, that's dirty work. Jumping into politics when you don't need to right now is dirty work. So he's avoiding it. But Ray, he's in national politics. Right. So I'm not going to be a hypocrite because I am many things, but that is not one of them. When Susan Collins declined to endorse Donald Trump, I said she's an American. She has a right to vote for who she wants to. I, I did talk with Mike Shepard of the Bangor Daily News on my show Friday. We talked about this, and I think the issue is not that he's not endorsing one or the other. I think the issue for Jared is you ever been in Portland and you're driving along and you're minding your own business and the car in front of you has one side in your lane and one side in their lane and either you say out loud or you say to yourself, dude, pick a lane. I think that's the issue. He needs to pick a lane to run in and whether it's Harris or whether it's Trump, that's fine. Or if he's going to vote for somebody else, as Collins did, I think she said she wrote in Paul Ryan, tell us that. I think the waffling here is going to be his issue, not who he's going to vote for. And mm -hmm. would it have been easier if he hadn't written that op-ed piece? I don't think so. You know, look, Jared has, I, I don't know that he's an independent, but he's tried to play off, uh, you know, over time. He votes with the Democrats about 85% of the time. He's a Democrat. He probably should. Um, but I think he tries too hard to make himself to be an independent voice. And that op-ed, it was unusual. And in light of the change from Biden to Harris, he's probably going to have a lot of heat on him between now and November to, to, to say one or the other, or I'm choosing a write-in. Yeah, and we already know it's going to be a close race, so yeah. we'll, we'll see how it plays sure. out. Yes. A challenge to keep Robert F. Kennedy Jr. from appearing on ballots in Maine has been withdrawn. James Stretch of Topson dropped his petition this week. He had accused Kennedy of not having enough signatures and not listing his correct address. Ray, what game is being played here? Well, you know, it's going to be a close election. I, I, I've always believed this. If someone wants to stick their neck out, I don't care what they believe. I respect them for that. Kennedy's put his name on the ballot. He got the required signatures according to Secretary of State, and he's on the ballot. And good for him. You know, he's got a message he wants to get out there. And I think all this stuff, and I said it when Shana Bellows disqualified Trump from the ballot, you're taking the ability of the people, which is what matters, you're taking away their ability to vote for the candidate they want to. And he's, what, five, six points in the polls. It could make a difference, you know, but what he's really doing, he doesn't think he's going to win. I don't think, but he's got some ideas that he wants to be on the national stage and this allows him to do that. Yeah. 
Do you think that he has a chance of actually taking votes away, though, Genius, from either of the candidates? I, I do, um, potentially from either. I've heard of it more about Trump, but I don't know that that's solid. So, yeah, he has a high potential to take away some of some of the votes. And I, I respect his rights, and I think that, again, if he earned his way onto the ballot, so be it. But I have to admit, I see it somewhat as a distraction. Now, you know me. I believe in the independent parties and not being Republican and Democrat. But I'm starting to believe that that battle to get that going needs to happen in between the elections. I think that we try to, like, do this thing and rework government during an election season. And I don't know, I don't know how effective that's going to be. So I think that, although, you know, he could take, he could take bo- votes away. I hope it doesn't. I hope that it allows a good leader moving forward to not be pushed out of the way. Right. But if your point, which you may be right, is about this challenge because he might take votes away from the candidate the challenger is worried about, that's no reason to disqualify somebody from the ballot. They should be on the ballot if that's what they want to do. And if you don't like it, don't vote for them. I do agree. And finally, let's wrap things up with winners, losers. Ray, we'll start with you. I have two winners. Uh, winner number one is my good friend Don Campbell and his band, yes. who on Saturday is doing the Flotilla to Fight Cancer. Their challenge is to raise $100,000. They raised $86,000 uh, last year to fight cancer. The money goes to the Cancer Foundation to help people who are fighting cancer, not just at the hospital, not just at the doctor's office, but at the dinner table where they pay their bills. The second winner is my wife. Last Friday, she had surgery, and Dr. Long was her surgeon. And I got to tell you, I can't say enough things about this lady. Mm -hmm. I was told, I talked about it on the air before it happened, that they all said she was a great surgeon and an even better person. I concur. She is a wonderful lady. And the staff at Intermed, at their surgical team where my wife was operated on, they could not have been better, some of which watch Political Brew because they mentioned it to me. (laughs) So so glad your wife's doing okay. Thank you. Genius. Uh, you know, for me, the, the winners, I have to say, are all of the newly registered voters. We can stick to Maine, every state. Sure. <laughs> but I've been hearing about this, and I've been hearing this amazing excitement, arguments and things like that. So that's who I think are the winners. Um, they are preparing themselves, particularly the young people, for their voices to be counted and be heard. But, you know, I had this conversation with some young, some young musicians the other day, the, these uh, brothers called Y2K, very talented. And they were talking about some of the presidential things that they've heard, and they were like, well, Maybe some people shouldn't vote if, if, you know, if it's going to be a problem. And I would say those are the only losers. Raise your voice. Get Amen. registered. Put the work in. Do some research. The only way to lose is if you just bow out. Because whatever happens, you're probably going to hate it. All right. Genius Black, Ray Richardson, thanks so much. That's going to do it for this week's Political Brew. Remember, you can watch anytime online or on New Center Main Plus. The Weekend Morning Report is back right after this.